Hi. In this video, we'll uh, cover Game & Watch again, as in my previous video. The difference uh, now is that we'll be using a Super Mario device and uh, we'll be doing something different. So first of all, we'll be flashing the device so, so that it can dual boot, which means it can run original software, as you can see right now, and it can run um, the RetroGo with all the emulators. So this is probably the best of both worlds, so you can have original firmware plus you can have games on emulators as well. The other thing is that we'll be using 64 megabyte chip uh, as opposed to 32 that we used in the last video. And the last thing is that we will be using a USB-C connector that's on this device um, right here. We'll be using USB-C connector to, f uh, to flash the device. Um, it is slightly more complicated because uh, the, the USB-C um, pins are rather small, um, but it's worth it, I think, because once you do it, you can put the device back on, uh, you know, put on the screw, uh, put on the back cover screws and all that, and uh, you can subsequently flash without even taking everything apart. So you just connect USB-C port or USB-C dongle, that will do as well. And, and you can flash it as many times as you want. So I think this is probably also the best solution. So using USB-C rather than um, rather than some custom uh, or, or connecting um, uh, the wires to the back port that's in there. And, and again, have a look at the pre previous video if you want to see how we did that. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, let's do that. Let's go. Uh, to the microscope. Oh, I'll, I'll uh, disassemble the device. Um, uh, in the meantime, if you want to see how it is assembled, very easy. Just have a have a look at the previous video, um, and uh, uh, I'll see you at the at the microscope. The the goal here is to go from this to this. So this is the game and watch and the debug port here. Um, this is the um, SWDIO pin number two, and then pin number five is SWCLK clock. Um, normally, or what we did in the last video, um, I just used the wires just with a plug on the other side to plug it into Raspberry Pi. Um, so um, we solder these wires to, to this. Um, to, to, to this port here, uh, we also used ground, which uh, is pin number three. Uh, but in this case, we won't need that because we won't be using this um, these wires. We will be using um, USB-C port. So um, and specifically, we will be using uh, those those two pins. So D plus is this one, and D minus is this one. Um, they are not connected. On the on the motherboard on the on the uh, game and watch, so we can we can safely use them. Um, so again, the, the USB C port on game and watch. So this is ground. Those two pins, um, outermost pins are ground. This is uh, five volts. Um, then this one is I think channel configuration, which essentially detects um, if the cable is plugged in and, and does a few other things that I'm not really sure what it is, but this one is D plus, this one is D minus. So we'll be soldering um, wires to these two pins and uh, we actually won't be using the back port. Uh, we will be using test points. So uh, this one here is um, clock on the left, oh, sorry, on the right hand side of the, of the main chip. And this one here is SWDIO. So this is what we'll be using. We'll leave this uh, debug port alone. And again, this, this, these pins here are connected or are connected to these test points. So we will be using this. It'll be um, one of the reasons is that I don't want to um, route the cables um, this way because later on we'll be replacing this chip and I will be doing, you know, we'll be doing some soldering here. So I, I don't want any, any wires, loose wires anywhere near this um, port so we'll just wire we'll just route these wires um, away from that from that chip and uh, we'll be um, 
we'll use these test points. And this wire is, I think I'm using 3034 uh, AWG uh, wire, 33, probably 32 maybe would work as well. I, I just have 34, if I'm not mistaken. And it'll, it'll be um, fairly easy to, to um, solder to these points. But uh, first things first, we need to um, disconnect the battery and uh, that's the first thing that we'll do. So to disconnect this, um, you need to slide the something thin underneath and just push it up like just like that. Don't um, just be careful. Don't um, push on this part because it will come off very easily. Also, don't pull um, the cables or these these wires. These connectors are very fragile, so be careful. But once it's disconnected, um, we can keep it disconnected for a while, or pr pretty much for the for the uh, whole mode part, and then we connect it and uh, and we don't ever need to disconnect it again. So with now with this uh, now out of the way. Um, I'll show you what we need to do. So we need you, you need to have a um, thin wire like I said I have um, mine is 33 gauge I believe or 34 34 I think and um, so here's how it looks like I'm oh, sorry um, so this is the the um, USB C connector so we'll con we'll we'll solder one wire to this pin and the other wire to to um, the minus pin. Um, what I'm using is an AMOLED uh, solid core wire, uh, and that's probably the best option. Uh, it will be tricky to solder, as you can see. This is very um, small or very um, uh, tiny area to solder. So what I'm using is the um, JBC. It's T115 or something like that. So um, the, the, the um, handle and here's how it looks like so this is the you probably can't see the handle it's it's very small and even even um, even this as, as you can see is um, it will do the job but uh, it's it's tiny I'm not sure what to use to compare it to but uh, well if you if you uh, <laughs> If you do that you'll see how small this is and now the reason I'm, I'm using USB-C port rather than the hard wiring the um, um, debug port is that if I use USB-C I won't have to take the whole thing apart if I need to reflash the device on flash new games or or do anything like that so I'll just plug the USB-C cable uh, with, a, with an adapter which I'll show you in a minute and I can flash the device without ever um, um, taking the back off or doing anything else. So obviously, it it, it won't work with your um, kind of standard connecting USB C to Raspberry Pi or to to your uh, to your PC or Mac. Uh, you will need um, a special dongle or or adapter. And what I'll be using is just um, it's just this. Uh, let me just focus a little bit. So this is the USB Type A. Just um, just adapter you can buy it for a few cents really uh, the only thing that we are in the only um, the only lines we are interested in in, in this uh, are these two d plus d minus d minus and we'll also wire ground and uh, 5 volts to raspberry pi so that we can power the whole thing from raspberry pi you could also use um and sorry and um obviously uh, you can't plug this one in your game and watch because it's USB-C but I also have this so this is just a regular USB-C to USB-A adapter the reason I'm, I'm, I have that is that um, when I plug it in uh, I can I can plug it you know I can hold it by by this adapter because there will be wires loose wires uh, here I don't want to mess with that so uh, this works very well for me the other option is you can you can use something like this so this is USB-C, uh, as you can see USB-C here, adapter. And again, uh, the only uh, pins 
you'd use is uh, V bus five volts ground uh, D minus D plus. We don't care about um, channel configuration pins or anything like that. Um, or, or essentially, you can use any adapter you wish. Just make sure you have uh, V bus ground D plus D minus. That's that's it. Again, I'll be using the U standard USB uh, type A adapter. This one here, um, and it will work. So let's um, let's start soldering. So first things first, I will um, add a little bit of solder solder to these to these pins, uh, and then I will try and thin these two wires. So again, th th these are enameled. So I need to apply some heat to remove that uh, enamel part from here, just the tip, and also uh, thin that with some solder, so that it can um, I can solder it easier. So uh, I'll apply some flux, not too much. That's probably way too much, but um, it won't hurt. Uh, so this one, this pin here, and this pin here. Yeah, that should do it. I'll probably what I'll probably do. I'll use some captain tape or some other tape to secure it because it will be tricky to um, to hold. Okay, so hopefully that that will work. Um, I'll flip this a little bit, and just make sure that I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so let's try and position this this one, and so this will be our D plus. And it's secured. As you can see the enamel has already came off, but that's fine. It won't. It's not touching anything. Fine with this. Um, and let's do D minus now. Okay, this one's secure as well. So that's almost done. Um, now, I need to be careful, obviously, because this will come off very easily. So I'll probably clean it off and I'll apply hmm, I'll apply some um, electronics grade silicone here instead of uh, hot glue. I, I don't like hot glue. Uh, so I'll apply a little bit of silicone. I'll, sh I'll show you that in a minute, but we need to clean this off first. So that's what we're going to do now. Hopefully, yeah, as I said, in, we need to be very careful here in this area. Um, 
this will come off as soon as you pull on it should be enough. I'll uh, remove the tape now. Okay. And I'll move those wires. I'll try and move those wires slightly to the side so that they're not touching anything at least not in this area and so that they also are not touching each other yeah this these components are in the way unfortunately it's not as easy I just don't want to pull too much okay so that should be enough I'll deal with the rest once I apply uh, some uh, silicone I'll probably do it somewhere somewhere here okay so I'm uh, I've actually changed my mind I don't think I'll be applying um, uh, silicone because it's it's messy this area is rather small and uh, I don't have the fine tip for my silicone so what I'll do I'll just uh, add some UV mask a bit of UV mask uh, over here to hold it hold this thing down let's but first let's just uh, see how if if these two are not touching and they and they don't yep yeah, so it should be it should be okay so um i'll apply i'll apply some uv mask as i said rather than silicone um i don't want to mess the whole board with silicone so let's just apply a tiny bit of UV mask to the area. Not too much, um, just a tiny bit should uh, keep those wires in place. You don't want a huge blob of, of um, of UV mask because it'll have a hard time uh, hardening so this is probably more than enough so now let's apply UV light and we should be good okay so that is done now and um, let's just see if uh, this hard as you can see the wires are are, are solid so now um, again what I'll do I'll just uh, route these wires probably probably somewhere somewhere here and uh, yeah throughout the whole board and then this will be our SWIO and uh, this pin will be our clock uh, so let's let's do it now okay so um, I'm back um, so I've, as you can see I've um, added a few more blobs here and there just to make sure that these uh, these wires are secure so um, oops it's not what I wanted to do so uh, there's one uh, I try to avoid these test points I don't know what it is uh, I just didn't want any of these cables of these wires to touch it there's another one just to make sure um, we are not oh, I try to avoid this um, this area this screw and then one more here uh, these cables were as you can see slightly too long these wires were too long so I just wanted to keep them on the board and then one final uh, blob here 
just to make sure this one is uh, this one's secure so uh, again this is now done it's not pretty um, far from it uh, it could have been done um, it could have been nicer I'd probably I probably should wa should should route this somewhere somewhere along along here maybe and then around around the the chip here or maybe under this these um, these legs yeah that, uh, that would probably be the better idea but again this um, this should work so let's do the final kind of check so again touching the red probe to uh, DIO and then we'll go back here and if I can do it with one one hand um, so SWIO should be D minus and D minus is this one here which it is and then red probe to clock and clock should be D plus which is right right here the top one here there it is so works perfectly fine so uh, now we we are done on on the, on the um, game and watch board now I need to focus on the adapter so um, again just uh, remember remembering that the clock is D plus um, IO is minus we need to solder I'll, I'll reuse my um, I'll reuse my uh, my uh, wires that I uh, used last time so um, on the Raspberry Pi the um, the pins are um, oriented in a way that uh, this middle one or green one uh, will be our ground so let's just say that the yellow will be clock ground IO so yellow clock and uh, as I said previously our clock is D plus so we need to make sure that we solder yellow to D plus here so yellow goes to D plus and then ground is is uh, green and D minus which is IO goes to blue so let's let's do that now so I've got this um, uh, orange or whatever the color is uh, wire that I'll be using for PBUS and I'll solder it right now this part of the job is done obviously I will need to clean this a little bit I don't want any um, flux leftovers because it's sticky mainly it doesn't hurt the board but it's sticky and this one this joint could could have been better but it will work okay so that's done um, let's go back to the um, to the computer or to the Raspberry Pi and back up our device okay so back at the um, at the PC so what we have here is our game and watch as you can see the um, the wires that we put in here um, battery still disconnected by the way uh, we won't be connecting battery until everything is done including the chip replacement so again just to to, to repeat the sequence of action um, we've wired the um, USB connector um, to um, to the to the back port or the test pin so that we can uh, back up um, unlock and uh, reflash the device or the, the flash which is in here um, so that's done right now we'll be we'll back up uh, our device or the flash internal board both internal flash that's in here and the external flash this one here will unlock the device we will restore the device well we, we don't technically need to do that oh yeah we we have to because there's internal flash and then we'll replace that chip and then uh, restore and flash the um, retro go or our games here so uh, just a 
going back to our the adapter i'm not sure if this will focus but it will so the um orange wire is our 5 volts v bus then blue is d minus yellow d plus and green is ground and again just a usb connector uh, or or adapter sorry and uh, how it connects to raspberry pi so the 5 volts is pin 2 this is technically pin 2 because it start we start counting from from this side from inside so pin 1 pin 2 then pin 3 on inside pin 4 on inside on outside and so on so but but if if we look from the outside from this edge so that's the first pin then blue wire goes to ninth then uh, green uh, which is ground to tenth and then uh, 11th pin on outside so that's how it is uh, how it's wired uh, so uh, i'll just flip this around and connect the actually let's let's power on uh, the raspberry pi first so i'll power it on i'll make sure i have i can connect so there we go it's uh, it's powering up this is my ethernet i don't have the wi-fi dongle i don't like them so it's just connected uh, by ethernet so i'll leave it here on the screen so that you can see it and then um and then we'll uh, we'll connect and and again the uh, gaming watch will be powered from raspberry pi hence that five volts here um and the debug um debug wires again the two um clock and data uh on the yellow i think yellow as far as i remember was clock and the data was on on the on the blue one so let me just check if um a raspberry pi is on and i'll put the terminal screen so that you can you can see it so there you go it is powered on and um, yeah so we're good to go so we can now power on this um the gaming watch so i'll just now um the in my case the orientation should be like that so the um how to how to say that so this uh, this side up and the reason is that USB-C ports are reversible, but we could only so if I go back here, we could only we could only solder to one side of it because the other side we can't see it's under the connector. So uh, not a big deal if it doesn't work one way, just uh, connect the other way around and it will work. So let's connect that and let's power the cam and watch on. Where's the I am my power button is been removed so there you go so it um powered on it's on the clock screen as uh, required as you can see so um what we'll do now and by the way i'm, I'm using this um the same image that i used in my previous video i'll i'll post put the links in the description but let's um so let's just change to opt then uh, game and watch backup so in this directory what we need to do is run the first script sanity check first so our interface so if you press enter you will see that it needs the interface and the type of device so in our case the uh, interface is raspberry pi and the device type is mario in this case so everything looks good so let's do let's back up um i think it's uh, external flash that's being backup first can remember or actually if we can if we have a look three yeah so uh, we'll be backing up external flash first and then internal flash so number two and then again uh, raspberry pi and device type is mario so make sure gamer was turns on and not time screen which this as you can see and press enter press enter sorry so now it will power off or the screen will power off and it will take a few minutes and we should have our backup on the our external flash backup in the backups in backups directory so uh, i'll come back when it's done
okay it looks like it's it's done and everything is fine uh, validate checksums seem to be fine so the backup is done um by the way the the, the reason we went the hard way i.e soldering to usb port is that once we are done with all this once we do backup once we replace the chip we can then put the device back on and we we will never need to um, um to remove the back or disassemble it again we can always use this and flush it again over and over again so that's the whole point uh, behind uh, usb connecting the debug lines to usb port and again it's safe because usb data lines are not connected in this device it's just power so uh, with the second step done let's do the and by the way you should have your first backup in backups directory if you do that uh, there you can see you can you can see your your backups then let's do a um, third step which is internal flash and again the interface is raspberry pi and device type is mario so we hit enter and uh, we will continue and again this will take some time and uh, once it's done we'll come back and the first step will be the um, unlocking the device okay so this um, seems to have done the job now we need to follow the steps obviously so we will disconnect the power which is our usb um, port then power it again so we will be connecting that again and um, press and hold a power button in my case it might be tricky because i have uh, removed the, the, the that, that um, rubber power button but i have access to to it right here so i'll press and hold hopefully you will be able to see what's going on on the screen uh, so press and hold so the screen is blue and now i need to press um, enter and i'm not really sure how to do that because i don't have a third hand um, Ooh, how do i do this no. i'm not sure if that will work because obviously i didn't hold okay um so let's see what's in our backups so there is um there is internal flash backup yeah so it seems seems to be fine so now we'll, what we'll do we'll do the fourth step which is the unlocking the device so number four unlock the device and and again raspberry pi and mario and obviously uh, there's always a risk of um, something going wrong but um yeah we'll continue okay so that um that was uh, pretty fast and the device is should be unlocked so um we're power cycle so remove power put power back on and then we'll run script number five which is restore so with what it will do it will restore the the flash uh, to its initial state so the device will be the, exactly the same flash as it was initially the only difference will be that the device is now unlocked so let's do that and again raspberry pi and mario this will take um uh, some time a few minutes so i'll come back once once it's done okay so that um, seemed to work so um let's um 
power cycle the device so I'll remove the USB port and again put it back on and let's turn it on power it on and see there you go so we have our original um, original games um, again the difference being that this device is now unlocked so we can flash custom firmware or any firmware we want but before we do that uh, I'll power it off again I'll just remove the um, the terminal and so what we'll do now is we will go ahead and remove this chip this is one megabyte as far as I um, I remember we'll remove that and we'll solder new one 64 megabyte chip which will hold quite a lot of games this is the as far as I know the maximum possible 64 megabytes but it's enough to hold about a hundred games as far as I remember um, and uh, yeah let's let's do it now we'll go back to the microscope so back at the microscope this is the chip that we'll be replacing there's two options one is hot air um, so use hot air to remove this chip and put the new chip back on but that I won't be using that there's um, plastic connectors uh, around this this battery which I would have to remove and probably the best option would be to remove the whole whole board and then use the hot air to remove that and put it back on um, I personally think it's not worth it for just this chip it's very easy to remove uh, and put back new one uh, I'll just use the um, low melt solder uh, you need very little uh, low melt solder this is chip quick that I'll be using uh, it's very brittle and you need to be very careful not to do a mess all over the, the place it melts very easily um, but uh, yeah I'll, I'll use that to uh, remove existing chip so let's let's start uh, as usual the flux first um, flux is probably probably the most important or well very important in this whole process because it makes solder flow a lot easier so <coughs> so what I'll do I'll just use a tiny bit of low melt solder I'll, as you can see it's very um, and that's what I just uh, said uh, don't make a mess so it's very effective oh, I'll put the fume extractor back on um, so yeah so we have low melt solder and all we need to do now is just um, hit one side hit up one side hit up the other side and as you can see it's gone so the chip is gone um, what we need to do now is to remove the excess solder or the, the low melt solder we don't need this um, so I'll do that now so just use um, some good wick and it should be fairly easy to do again uh, be careful not to uh, remove any um, any of these components small components there so let's just start removing the normal solder so you can see it's one side is done uh, let's do the other side And we're good. Now, the um, the chip that we'll be using, uh, by the way, this is pin one. Very important. Um, so what we'll be using now, we'll be putting on this chip. And. Uh, as you can see this is a um, different package uh, if I just can if 
leave it here so it's different package so uh, we need to essentially solder to these to these points um it's not as trivial as as um the the original chip but it can be done uh, first of all we'll need to make sure that our pin one is in the right place so right here uh, the other thing i'll probably do uh, the same thing i, I did uh, last time because as you can see if we place the chip right here um there's not much um of these pads that we can use so um fortunately as you can see we can scrap this here and you can do it with pretty much any any um sharp tool but what i'll use i'll use the same thing i used last time so i have that kind of grinding pen or micro dremel or something or stuff like that i don't know what what it's called so uh, i'll just use this and remove this a little bit more of that uh, of these pads just carefully slowly that's done this side now okay let's let's clean it and see if it um, if it's any better should be yeah there's a lot more copper that we can use to solder that new chip but first I'll thin it with um, um, solder just regular solder we won't be using low melt solder anymore so I'll um, thin this so that uh, actually um, we'll put flux first we'll thin it just just to make sure that it's easier to put the chip on so a little bit of flux soldering iron This tape is probably too big for this, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do it with this one. Okay, now we will go ahead and remove excess solder or remove the solder from the pads because we need our chip to um, sit flat on the board. So let's do it now and I'll use that big uh, tip right now because it's easier and faster. Okay, one side is done. So this is done. I'll clean it again. I'll clean the whole thing again. Um, That's enough. Now, um, as I said, the chip will go on these pads and then we solder to those pads. But first I'll add a little bit of flux, not too much. It's just to help soldering with soldering and uh, it will help to keep the chip in place. So back with our chip. And again, pin one, we need to make sure that pin one is in the right place, which is here and here. So we'll try to position it as the best we can. And we'll, um, there, I think that that should be okay. Let's just have a quick look. Um, so this side is perfectly fine let's have a look at the other side this side is perfectly fine as well so 
what we need to do now is to solder this. I'll push the chip gently, push the chip so that it stays in place and then I'll just go ahead and solder. Now we have a bridge here, that's not a problem. I just used too much um, solder, that's okay. We are not worrying, worried about that. We'll just we'll fix it in a minute. We'll just add more flux. There you go. And we'll do the other side. And I'll just flip this around. And the same thing. Uh, I think I have... Yeah, I'll probably use the that big... Um, this one's just too small, I believe. So I'll use the big one. And that should be a lot easier now. There you go. That's actually perfect tip for this job. So this side and we'll do the other side again just to make sure we have good connection between the motherboard and the and the chip. So that's it. We'll clean it off and double check the connections and and that will be it so let's go back to connect the whole thing to raspberry pi and flash the chip okay so back at the computer this is our uh, gaming watch with the flash chip new flash chip new uh, sorry with the with the usb wired to the backboard raspberry pi is up and running uh, and the our adapter is connected so i didn't do anything just connect the adapter don't try and power it power it up or do anything like that uh, just plug it in so there will be two steps that we need to follow first one is to patch the original um, firmware and flash it back to the device the reason for that is that we've installed 64 megabyte uh, flash chip and original firmware only works with flash chips that are 16 megabytes or less so in this case we need to dual boot so we need to be able to boot original firmware and also retro go with all the emulators uh, so we need to patch that original firmware in order for it to run on 64 megabyte chip so that's the first step the second step once we done we've done that the second step will be to uh, build and flash the retro go uh, and uh, all the emulators and all that so let me just bring um, up the terminal and uh, let me just clear the screen and we are in uh, opt directory uh, so we need to go to game and watch patch and first thing we need to do is to copy the original firmware backups of original firmware which we've done in one of the previous steps and they are in game and watch backup backup backups and we need two files we need this one which is external flash and we also need internal flash copy which is this one here so once we have that here uh, we just do make um, make clean just to make sure there's no uh, remains of any previous builds or anything like that one other thing we need to do we need to use the the modified version of open ocd the original one or the official one does not support um, multiple banks in flash as far as i know again don't quote me on that just if you want search the internet or google but all you need to do is essentially tell all these scripts to use um, that patched version of open ocd which is here and again it's it's included by default in that uh, raspberry pi image that i that i'm using and again the it will be in the description so do that and then the next step is to simply run the make so sorry let me do that again again so we need to run this command so one of the things that is important here is a large flash equals one variable this has to be set because we are using 64 megabyte flash let's do that and i think we need to press and hold power button for it to work on the game on, on game and watch so this is now patching the original firmware 
and uh, once it's done patching it will uh, flash that to there you go programming started so we should be good this will take a few minutes i'll come back when it's done okay so this um, seemed to have worked let's just uh, power cycle the device so disconnect power or usb connect it back again i'll flip it to the to this side and the yeah, power button gone again or that rubbery thing so i'll try to power it up can, i'm not sure if you can see this there you go so this is our original uh, firmware and let's see if we can start on any any of the included games and yes we can so original firmware works perfectly fine okay so i will just um, power it off again i'll put my uh, power button again this is uh, need to watch for it because it will fly away at some point and you will never find it okay so it's back on and um, the next step let's clear the screen next step is to build retrogo so we'll be using the version of retrogo uh, the new ui which has nice um, artwork and and cover flow and stuff like that the the version here on 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 the on this image that i'm that i that I'm, I'm using is slightly outdated so we need to do we need to actually download the um the uh, newer version and uh, i'm sharing uh, this so we need to download this version this is the new ui as you can see and you can go ahead and read um, all the stuff here but essentially what you need to do you need two command you need to run um, just uh, two commands and the first one is right here so git clone uh, rehearse some modules but uh, don't don't uh, copy and paste everything because this is the original version of retrogo with no uh, artwork and all that so just paste that here and then um, go back to code copy this and then it will this will clone um oh sorry uh, so what i did just um, yeah you didn't see that um so let me let me just um, do it again this command here or let me clear the screen even better and then you need to copy the git clone minus minus recurs minus sub modules and then paste that um, that url that i showed you so once you do that you need to go to game and watch um, retro go directory and again i'll bring back this window and one more thing that you need to do is again here and this time you can just copy and paste this will download any additional modules or any scripts that are required for for this build to work this is normally very fast and all that so one more thing sorry there's one more thing that you you need to do so you need to in this directory so in the new newly downloaded directory you just make you run uh, make rom rom dev and this is again usually very very fast and uh, that that's done now and uh, the last step before we actually build and flash the whole thing is you need to have your own roms so if you do ls and then you see the roms directory here so if we change to that and then you see the ColecoVision, I think, Game Boy, um, I have no idea, uh, Game Gear, yes, Sega Game Gear, uh, Game Watch, NES, and so on. So in these directories, they are empty because you need to put your own ROMs uh, and ROMs and, and artwork in these directories. Uh, obviously, I won't provide that. The best option is to use your own uh, ROMs that, of the games that you have, or alternatively, you need to find it somewhere on the internet. I have my um, ROMs prepared, so I'll just remove this. Actually, no need to remove that. So I have exact same directory um, um, retro go. So this is exact same directory that we just we've just been working with, looking at. The only difference is that if we go to ROMs and say NES, you'll see that I have um, yeah quite a lot of these. 
that's all you need to do uh, when it comes to uh, you know ROMs and preparing all this stuff. And uh, what you need to do now is to essentially build and flash. So the command to do that is let me clear the screen. Is this now? I'll try to explain this these uh, variables or parameters as much as I can. So we have a chip that's 64 megabytes. The original um, flash size on Mario is one megabyte. So if we need to um, you be able to dual boot, we need to take that into account. So the one megabyte of our 64 megabyte chip will be taken by by original firmware. So for for RetroGo, RetroGo can only use 63 megabytes in this case. And then the offset, the external flash offset is just one megabyte. So this is uh, 1024 by 1024. Uh, and that that's um, another thing is that it, it, it it's some, somehow emulates or simulates banking within the or memory banking within the flash. Again, don't quote me. You can Google all about that. This is required anyway. With, with this command, just press enter and then it will build the whole RetroGo um, image and all the fla on all the all the ROMs and uh, flash this to your device. I'll come back uh, when it's done. By the way, one more thing that you need to do while this is compiling, obviously, connect your game and watch. Without that, nothing will work. So this again, this will take several minutes. I'll come back when it's done. Uh, it probably will fail, by the way, um, because I think I need to press and hold a uh, power button. But uh, let's see what it does. And again, uh, once it's finished, I'll I'll come back. Actually, let's break the whole thing. There's one more thing that I forgot. Um, what you need to do, you also need to export. Uh, sorry, not this. You need to export one more um, variable which is cover flow equals one. Uh, this is obviously required. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't see any um, artwork or anything like that. So let's do that or let's clean, clear the screen again and then cover flow one and then the same command that we just did. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll do it again. Sorry about that. And again, once it's done, I'll come back. Okay, so this uh, this has been compiled, obviously, and as you can see, uh, <clears throat> we are using um, about 44, 45 megabytes with some uh, 10 megabytes left. So we can still add, you could still add a lot more ROMs and all that. And the reason it didn't work because, as I said, um, I think I need to press and hold power button and then do it again. Yep, so this seemed to work. I think I need to... Actually, let's flip the board so that you can see what's going on on the screen. Now my power button will most likely fall off right now. But... Okay, I'll keep it like that for the moment. Yeah, so I had to keep the... Um, let me just do one thing. So press and hold. And I'm pressing and holding the power. And let's see if it works. If not, we'll start it again. Okay, it did work now. So you need to press and hold power button um, until you see this, this screen here. Once the, you see this screen, you can release the power button and just uh, wait. Now this process will be a very long one, just similar to the, the whole compilation, which took close to an hour. Obviously, it depends on uh, how many ROMs you have, but um, yeah, it's more or less an hour. Uh, this will also take time, also depending on the size of your um, of your flash. So all, all the um, emulators and all the uh, all the games that you have, but uh, I'll, I'll show you in a minute um, the the status, so you ha you will have an idea 
uh, where you are. So this will, um, let, let's just wait, there you go. So you, you see here on the screen, we'll be doing, the, the, the flashing will be done in chunks or um, yeah, in, in 56 parts. Um, I don't really know the reason. I think this limitation of the of RAM or of of uh, of this because uh, I think when it's flashing, it has to copy the data to RAM uh, and then from there flash it back. So it can't do it in one one go, sixty four megabytes or whatever the, the the size was. But so so it has to do it in in in, in chunks. So as you can see, this is step one out of fifty six, and this will take very long time, an hour or so. So obviously I won't keep you here for <laughs> for an hour because it's been way too long already. So again, just uh, you can leave it uh, and just uh, check from time to time, you know, the number, what the number here is. Um, so I'll leave it and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so we are done, apparently. Um, before we put back our device before we um, connect the battery and all. Uh, let's just uh, quickly check if everything worked. So let's power cycle the thing again. Then put the power back on. And my power switch is gone again. But uh, I'll try to power it on. So there you go. This is our original Cam and Watch. And uh, let's just uh, see if we can play one of the original games and we do and uh, if we press game and then uh, the directional path right we should be at the retro go and all of our emulators so there you go as you can see it uh, seemed to have worked uh, let's just uh, obviously these are the roms that i am uh, chosen Fantasy Star doesn't have an artwork. Yeah, that that can happen. I couldn't find some of this. Um, I couldn't find some of these. So, um, but let's uh, let's see if Outrun works. This is from Sega Master System, and uh, it'll be a new game. And it sure does. So there you go. Um, all is left now is um, obviously power it back, power it off again, and then connect the battery. Just be careful again. Don't. Uh, um, don't try to force anything. Um, be careful. Put the connector back in. Uh, put put the cover back on, and it goes that way. So put the cover back on. Put the screws, and you're done. I'll just put the battery uh, uh, connector back on, just to show you that it uh, it will power on. This is kind of not so easy to do. But let me just, um, I should have brought my tools, but okay, let's, again, as I said, just be, be careful. Don't force anything. There you go. Back on. So I'll just put the cover temporarily. Oh yeah. Don't forget this thing. This is really annoying thing. Anyway. Um, so it's all back on, just uh, temporarily put it back, then just uh, power the whole thing on. So as you can see, perfectly fine. So let's try a uh, game left, and there you go. So what's left now is uh, put the screws on and enjoy the device. I hope this was useful. Please consider subscribing. Um, like the video, comment, ask questions, happy to answer. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. We'll uh, try and do next video. I'm not sure what it will be yet, but uh, either some sort of Game Boy restoration, modification, or I have a few PlayStation 3s that needs need fixing. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, subscribe and you'll get a notification. Thank you.